Get a Brewster here with number three for all, and this is three Aldi Miola licks from 1976. And Aldi Miola is another guitar legend, a complete pioneer of rock and jazz, fusion, classical, flamenco, world music. He's done it all, acoustic and electric. And back in the 70s, he was known as one of the fastest guitarists on earth and influenced, you know, Eddie Van Halen and dozens of players, you know, when they were younger. That's before the big shred boom in the 80s, you know, with Malmsteen and Pai and Satriani and that crowd. But definitely, you know, his work with Return to Forever and his solo albums back in the 70s influenced, you know, millions of guitarists. Al's worked with a lot of musicians and collaborations or guest appearances and, you know, uh, invited different musicians on his solo albums. And here's an image showing some of the people that he's played with. And Al's still active, so he's, his career's not over. But these are just some of the people that he's worked with, you know, in his career up to this point. I did see Al in concert uh, back in 1994 on his Orange and Blue tour, and that was a while ago, but I do remember that concert vividly. You know, great show, you know, great performance. And they even had like really cool lighting too, which was a shock. I didn't expect to see lasers and stuff like that. You know, and then I did meet Al a couple of years ago at Sweetwater, and I was taking a tour with Nick Balcott, and we spotted him on the tour and he was shopping there with his band just kind of hanging out and we ran over there like children we were like oh my gosh Al Miola's here and we got pictures with him and you know got a pic and I'll never forget that I mean it was like meeting guitar royalty the licks in this lesson come from a live TV appearance in 1976 when he was working with Return to Forever you know, Chick Corea's fusion supergroup, Stanley Clark and Lenny White, Al Miola and Chick Corea. And if you're not really hip to fusion, you definitely need to listen to Return to Forever. I mean, that's kind of the spark that really just influenced and pushed, you know, music forward. And, you know, a lot of people consider Return to Forever fusion. And I can definitely, you know, hear the fusion, but there's so much more going on than just jazz and rock. There's elements of classical, there's elements from other styles of music. So it's almost like prog fusion or prog jazz or something, you know, progressive jazz, because it's very different. You know, it's not elevator jazz and it's not classic jazz. And it's not, you know, heavy metal or hard rock or something, but it's definitely pushing, you know, the musical envelope fo uh, forward. And I love Return to Forever. The first lick is this descending sixes like speed lick. And he's basically running a six note sequence and repeats it over and over and over at lightning speed, something like this. And there you can see we're basically coming down uh, this, you know, A flat, G flat to F, and then E flat, D flat to C. And you can definitely pick every note. I'm kind of doing like a half and half. I'm cheating a little bit. So I'm picking the first two notes and then pulling off to the third. And then doing the same thing on the B string. And once you have that sixes pattern, you want to do it nine times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then on the ninth time, grab that A flat and bend it up a whole step. And you're bending A up to B flat, technically. So right there. And here's the footage from 76 without playing that crazy lick. Up next is the crazy Clark phrase, and this comes from his song The Magician from uh, Romantic Warrior, which is that album right there. And this is crazy, something like this. And right there, slowly, you can see we're doing this. So that's really bizarre. Let's go through that really slow, like this. So there's this weird, you know, 
know, kind of half step or chromatic kind of shift right there too. <laughs> Just a weird, you know, timed phrase and it's very, uh, you know, very unique for sure. <laughs> Here's the clip of them playing this back in 76. All right, here's a crazy Korea lick, and this comes from his song The Romantic Warrior, you know, the title track from that album. And it's just this short little phrase that's played over D minor, but he's targeting the ninth, you know, that E note on the B and also on the A string too. And he's doubling this with Chick Korea, so the piano and the guitar are both playing this. Something like this. One more time. And then a little bit slower, you can see we're doing this. You know, it's a very intense little phrase. And the way the notes, you know, are arranged and the way it flows is really unusual too. So that's kind of a telltale, you know, Chick Corea lick, that odd phrasing and kind of quirky, you know, rhythmic phrasing. But, uh, you know, one more time, kind of slower. And he is definitely muting, you know, the mutola technique, where Al's kind of slightly or lightly palm muting, you know, the notes. And he's playing this on acoustic. I'm just playing it on electric. I mean, my acoustic's sitting right over there, but I just decided to go ahead and play it on electric guitar. But he is technically playing this on acoustic guitar, and using his patented uh, mutola, you know, muting technique, where it's muted, but the notes still have a little bit of ring to it. You know, it's more of a dampening than an actual mute. But here's the footage from 76 with that lick. Here's a bonus lick from this live footage, and this came from the performance of the Duel of the Tyrant and the Jester. And it's this crazy, you know, kind of speed pentatonic lick. And it reminds me of some licks that you'd hear from players like Zach Wild. But here's Al Di Miola, you know, shredding this lick back in 1976. Uh, something like this. <laughs> And once again, he's still kind of using a little bit of the, the mutola, you know, kind of slight palm mute. But slowly, he's basically, you know, starting a B minor pentatonic right here. So that sequence, you're doubling the first two notes. And then coming straight down. And then double the first two notes. And then come down three times. So one more time there. And then go up to the next position of, uh, you know, B minor pentatonic. The next position. And then right there. Something like that. But here's the footage from 76 with him shredding that uh, way, you know, way before Zach Wilde had even probably touched a Les Paul. That's going to wrap this look at three licks from Al Miola from 1976. And definitely, you know, a monster guitar player. Tons of things you can learn from him. Chord-wise, you know, lead-wise, exotic scales, exotic chords, you know, uh, very intense technique, you know, very methodical and a very intelligent person, you can tell. You know, Al is no slouch, you know, across the board. It's like he's, you know, very professional and very just in your face. Like when he plays, he just demands your attention, you know, and uh, that's really inspiring. It's also kind of intimidating, too. Like when I met him, I was kind of scared. I thought, that's Al Di Miola. You know, it wasn't just a casual thing. I was kind of, you know, half scared because I thought, man, I knew how important he is. And, uh, and he was super nice, you know, so slowly back and friendly and, you know, pics were flying around, picture time and all this stuff, and he was totally cool with all of it. So, uh, you know, what a musician and a great guy, too. But anyway, leave some feedback and some comments. Please subscribe to Late Night Lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.